103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello, and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LP FM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, January 10th, 2021. I'm Larry Rhodes, your daughter five. And as usual, we have our co-host, Wombat, on the phone with us. Hello, Wombat. And that is so Raven. Okay. Don't know what that means. <laughs> That's probably because <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> and our guests today are Boudreaux. Hello, Wombat. Boudreaux, Dread Pirate Higgs, Grr. a digital free thought radio hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faith, gods, holy books, and superstitions. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in Knoxville, well, you're just not. There are several atheist, free-thinking, rationalist groups that exist right here in Knoxville, and we'll be telling you how you can connect with them right after the mid-show breaks. Also, did you know that there was a streaming atheist call and video show broadcasting right here in Knoxville? Did you know that one, Bat? I did, and I can't wait because Zach Morris hasn't aged a day, and I think Mario Lopez looks, still looks great, so I'm really looking forward Zach to seeing Morris. the cast of Saved by the Bell really get back together again. This is going to be uh, a really amazing reboot. Keep flipping those channels. You'll find it eventually. <laughs> Actually, if you go to YouTube, that's mm-hmm. where you'll find it, but we'll give you more details about that after the mid-show break. And if you'd like to interact with us during the show, it's 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. Uh, go to Facebook and search for our Digital Free Thought Radio hour and use the messaging function to send us questions or comments. Wombat, what do you have for us today? I wanted to talk about gaslighting today, which is sort of like the term of the year for that I learned last year, but it's basically I, telling the same I can't lie. what relevance that would have <laughs> this week. <laughs> it's telling a lie over and over again until people believe it or, or yeah. deceiving people with a repeated falsehood. Uh-huh. And I think it plays a lot into what's going on today, especially last <clears> week. <throat> especially the last four years, <laughs> you name it. Right. But before we right. get into it, how about we throw it up to our own Dread Pirate Higgs for our weekly invocation. Brr. So, quab be me, Captain, I shall not want. He maketh me to float in salt water. He steereth me through glassy seas. He filleth my bowl. He steereth me through the straits of noodliness. For goodness sake, I, though I shall sail through the heaving of tempestuous waters, I will fear not sinking, for thou art with me. Thy mast and thy rudder, they comfort me. Thou preparest a feast before me in the presence of me mates. Thou quenchest my thirst with grog, my goblet runneth over. Truly, pasta and grog shall abide with me all the days of me life and I shall dwell in the galley of our quab forever. Amen. All right, so as a quick little warning for people who don't like us getting political, I think this is still a show that you should watch because this is things that affect you as well. It's There's a things where it's like, I don't like politics really is just a euphemism for, I don't like people that say things that I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> but this is something that really does affect everybody. And I think right. it's worthwhile if you listen to it. Uh, Larry, would you mind going over what might have happened of interest this uh, last week? What could have happened? Uh, or just generally, well, just a recap just of news What events. happened in the news? Yeah, news. I don't think anything really happened. Would you mind covering yeah. over some things? Yeah, except an uh, attempted overthrow of the government. That's all. <laughs> uh, instigated, instigated by the sitting president. And uh, it just, it's just amazing. Uh, he, he's had this line that the, the, the last election, presidential election, was a fraud. He's absolutely no evidence. We have right. a court system that if you have evidence for that, you can take a case to court and prove your point. Right. He has taken more than 50 cases. 62. Uh, 62 cases to court <clears throat> have no evidence to prove any kind of fraud. And in one particular instance, um, Rudy Giudiali, Judy, I can't say his last name, Giuliani. Rudy Gurudelli, he sells chocolate. Yeah. We all know this. <laughs> Actually, Giuliani. we're not, we're not uh, attempting to prove fraud. We're, probably, we're tra- attempting to prove mis- 
mis malfeasance or something. But anyway, it's in direct contradiction to what Trump's been saying all along anyway. But anyway, uh, the biggest thing was that uh, Trump had a rally just before um, the electoral college votes were counted, were to be counted in, uh, in Congress, and uh, sent the crowd of several thousand people down the street to the Capitol to invade it and take it over, and, uh, in his words, to uh, encourage our senators and discourage the others. Uh, but w these people had bombs with them. They had guns with them. They um, had zip ties they, they for zip ties. They, had, they broke windows and doors to gain entrance. If they And one person was actually shot and killed trying to get into the uh, pit where the senators and congressmen, well, the senators, I guess, were, uh, were assembled to, to vote on the yep. Electoral College. Now, also in that chamber was the vice president, the president of the Senate, I mean, the pre and the president per tempe, I can't remember how he's pronounced it. But Basically, the, the, the next four levels of who would be in charge of the president. Three levels there. Of, of succession to the presidency were in the same chamber. If they gained interest entrance into that chamber, who knows what would have happened to our governmental yeah. structure. Essentially, the next four most powerful people in the world, all in one building, right. and mm -hmm. a bunch of protesters slash and rioters sends, slash He sends a mob down right there, in. an armed mob to yep. that chamber. Oh, man. Boudreaux, how would you add to that? Or what was your, what would be your take on uh, this week's events? I want to get everyone's opinions before we go through it. Yeah, well, uh, first, a big thank you to, to Ty for, for warning me because <laughs> I was up for a walk chatting with a buddy of mine on the phone for like an hour, and I missed the whole news drop oh of the goodness. whole thing. <laughs> I was like, uh, what just happened? <laughs> uh, so I was Are you gaslighting me? <laughs> no, no, no. No, I think it was, you were on the phone with Chad, weren't you? It was yeah. just like just another buddy-buddy moment. I was just like, stop, yeah. stop being friends and <laughs> yeah. go no, home. you know I love to just disconnect from, I, you know, I don't have Facebook on my phone anymore. And, sure. and uh, I mean, I use it on a browser, of course. Uh, but yeah, I was just d completely disconnected from, uh, um, from, from the world. Yeah. My wife was uh, actually handing out food for a God's pantry, um, uh, which is a bit ironic for our family, but um, and uh, it, it, yeah, it just neither of us knew what was going on until, Ty, you, you, you messaged us. So, uh, okay. yeah, I had to kind of scramble to pick up what was going on. But, yes, a, a little afraid. Was anyone else mm. afraid? I was scared. I was legitimately <sighs> scared. Yeah. And I didn't People realize how scared I was until I started calling my friends and family being like, hey, uh, you don't want to be, you know, a person of color walking down the streets right now. Even in Kentucky, in Frankfurt, there was Trump protesters around your Capitol building mm -hmm. ready to uh, be even more uh, violent. Like I was looking up the news, like, okay, so what's going on in Georgia? What's going on in Kansas? What's going on in Kentucky, Tennessee protesters at every Capitol building of those States getting more riled up. Uh, and I'm like, okay, if this is what's going on at DC <laughs> with the best, when my head in my head, the best security available, right? Secret service, everything. What the hell's going on <laughs> in, in Tennessee? What's going on in, in Georgia right now? This is, this could be a nationwide thing. And I don't think the person who's in charge that inside of this would be prone to calling a national emergency. So the best thing I can do is just call people that I care about and just say, Hey, stay home. If you can stay home, please. Um, Sorry, sorry for stepping on your on your toes on that description, Boudreaux. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, the the other thing I'd add is um, it's my understanding too that the the group that attacked the Capitol they weren't like DC locals. Like they were people yeah. from all over the country, yep. which is actually a good sign in my mind. Yeah. Because it just means that they plucked the craziest of crazy from around <laughs> the country, <laughs> put them together, and 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 that's what happened. So that makes me feel better that right. You know there aren't. 70 million people in right. the country that are all yeah that's a great so. point if they were all just literally across the street if that was just the dc chapter of you know crazos i'd be like dang dang <laughs> dang, yes, dang, yes. dang okay well yeah, yeah. <clears throat> let me get my uh, well, black lives uh, matter uh, t-shirt and, and the other point that you were saying in different cities uh, a lot of the stuff was going on um downtown knoxville didn't see much activity during that time so good. that's good though 
I want to say, and this is not a, this is not shade on Knoxville because Knoxville, in my opinion, is a bastion of like just you know progressive forward thinking identity. But the one of the ladies that got maced in the face, uh, who did an interview, uh, you're nodding your head. Yeah. She got maced in the oh, face. She's like, right. "What's going on?" I was like, "I got maced in the face. Why did you get maced in the face? Because I was storming the Capitol building. It's a revolution. But how they how dare they do that to me? I'm like." Put two and two together. You, if you were black, you would have been shot. You would have been dead right now. Come on, dude. All right. So <laughs> she never would have gotten into the Capitol. If it, if yeah. That she way. Was from that school. So yeah, it takes everyone. Uh, George, I'd love to get your opinion on this. I know you have a lot to say, maybe even bring in your neighbor, but uh, what, were you thinking? what were you thinking? What was going well, on? Well, I, I, no, I, I, I'll tell you, um, I, I, I wasn't paying attention at, at the time. I, I was doing something else, and my buddy in Denmark got all upset about it and emailed me, and that's how I knew something was wow. going on. So he, he emailed you, paying rapt attention in Denmark. Now my right. buddy in Denmark happens to be a retired newspaper reporter, so. Um, you know, we've talked about the discrepancy between <clears throat> what reporters see and yes. what, how their stories wind up after the editors get done with them. Mm. And, and it's like this thing is just too, too big to, um, to not survive mm. what the editors could do to it. Mm, it's true. And the other thing is that uh, in a way, I'm really glad that this happened because it is so outrageous, it's so over the top, that it cannot be swept under the rug. Right, it will right. have positive consequences. Mm -hmm. Positive consequences. In the long haul, I think, yeah, I, I, in the long haul, I really think that it's going to be b beneficial because it's like the guy got so out of, out of control mm -hmm. that it is impossible to to dispute the ignore fact it. the man is insane. It. Right, yeah. right, absolutely. You can't ignore it. Uh, and, right. and so I think yeah, that's that our what, president you're talking about. How dare you? I was just playing. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, our president for the next week, less than a week. No, it's yeah. still a little bit more than a week. Thank you. Well, let me add this one thing to it, and then let's, let's move on to somebody else. Um, that I think that um, psychological analyses of this Oh, I lost your volume. Uh, are going to come the hell has been going on. So it's going to be good. Overall, positive consequences Thank you. for really bad action yes. or series of actions. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Dredd, yeah. I'd love to get your feedback. You're not in the United States, but you are American. And I wanted to know, like, what was your opinion seeing something like this, if you did see it on the news? How was it conveyed in Canada? I, I think Canadians let out a collective sigh of just sort of, oh my goodness, again? <laughs> it, again? It was like 1965 and now, now? Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I mean, um, it, it was a, just a head-shaking uh, moment to see it all all taking place. and. And you know, I think I think there were some people that kind of, you know, had a sense that this actually might be something that would happen. Yeah, I don't know if that's the case, but oh no, uh, I wasn't surprised. I could put it that way. Good, that's a good phrase to put it, because a lot of people here, particularly people of color, were not surprised in the U.S. either. Though I want to say this: here's my take. Here's my take. Um, you know, I wanted to do a whole sarcastic. Thing on like, well, they were all patriots and, and all this stuff, but like, I don't have the stomach for it because really what I saw was like some of the most offensive things to every veteran that died, every veteran that got injured, you know, every civil rights movement towards trying to get us to vote, you know, like every, every step forward and every, you know, every effort made towards equality and, and the betterment of this nation and like progression towards what was originally just you know, uh, 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 I want to say like a boat full of people looking for a better life and all the craziness in between that's happened all the way up to now. Like, that's just such a spitting on this nation's history. And something I hear a lot is like, 
that's not us. That's not America. Like when you look at, you know, all these people invading into the Capitol building and they're, they're carrying the Confederate flag <clears throat> and they're screaming things that are absolutely obscene, you know, due to the nature of just like whatever bubble, news bubble they're in or, you know, socioeconomic position they were in at the time, racially charged things that they're saying. It reminded me that a lot of people have this overinflated impression, this idealized, romanticized version of what America is, because that is America. That is a, a facet of who we are as a country. We have those people, and we've had had those people. And for a long period of time, those people were in charge. And the reason why they're upset now is because the power dynamic is slowly ebbing, ebbing towards more egalitarian state where people who are women and people who have darker skin color than khaki are having more political sway in what they need to say. Look at Georgia, like that is the demonstration of, you know, women, black people, all real coming together and saying like, none of this guy, please have better representation. We bet, and we and we elected our first black senator, and that should have been the good news for that day. But for that to go from, hey, new black senator, youngest, like a young guy, like all the people in the Senate are really old, to be honest with you. Like we finally have like a young senator, a millennial senator, a senator younger than me, that's the first time in my life that's ever happened. And and have have this capital rush be the the real story of the day. It's kind of mind boggling. <laughs> and so um, my takeaway is like um, one. I'm glad people get to see it for what it is. Yeah, you know, I'm reminded of um, Childish Gambino's "This Is America" music video. I don't know if you ever seen it. Probably mm -hmm. not very popular among this cast. But Eric, I know no. you got me on this one. Oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> love it. It's just, it's just a guy saying "This is America," and it's just n crazy, chaotic explosions and stuff <laughs> going in the back. And you're listening to this music, and you're like, "What does this even mean?" A lot of people are like, "What does this even mean?" But every black guy watching, I was like, "I know exactly what he's trying to say. I get what he's trying to say." And like, if you play, <laughs> if you play "This Is America" video and just watch muted video of just the capital rush it's like i can't tell these two music videos apart they're like one has a dancing <laughs> black guy in it the other one doesn't and it's just like that's the only way i can tell these two apart <laughs> now but uh i want to just say like um i i think i'm with george because i think this is going to have good consequences and i think that's something that we really need now mm. more than uh what was in my opinion a very slow burn complicit complicit complicity Towards what, what, yeah. towards what I found to be just the most offensive amount of anti-American sentiment, anti-American um, um, uh, gatherings, uh, anti-American, you know, just uh, appreciation for different people who, who helped to build this country. Uh, and just like scary rhetoric that everyone was just saying, well, he's our president, we have to deal with it. It's like, ooh, no, we have a say, we can probably stop this. And I'm glad it happened now during a transition period where it's like, okay, what's gonna be Trump's legacy? Like, what's his final note? What's the thing that people are gonna remember? And I think oh. what we're gonna remember is that he really did make America great again, because he left with the <laughs> Democrats in charge of the House, the Senate, he lost the presidency, <laughs> he got banned off Twitter. <laughs> so true. Yeah, true. yeah, yeah, we got our first black senators, like we, we won Georgia, like you, well, the he, list goes on, it's just like, wow, you really yeah. did a good job. <laughs> nobody, nobody. Well, but, yeah. uh, don't forget though that, that he left us a, a lopsided Supreme Court. And, and the court system. Uh, one thing but I nobody, want to mention. Nobody mentioned, I mean, nobody motivated the Democratic voters like, like Trump. Right. I mean, nobody has got those those kind mm -hmm. of voting exactly. numbers out. And no one Trump moved did. as many moderate Republicans towards him as as well. Right. Like Georgia still very much is not a, you know, a liberal haven yet. Right. It was enough to move the needle. And that's like, wow, okay, great. Um, I, uh, I want to mention that um, uh, something I found interesting. Hmm. I'm, I'm going off to the side here a little bit. Sure. But what we had in the case of, of Trump was a reaction against Obama. Yes. It was the backlash. And the same thing happened in New York City. You know, we had a black mayor, David Dinkins, who we'll be forgetting about a lot because um, the guy who replaced him, Giuliani, like Trump, is a real blowhard. Mm. So um, 
it was a, I mean, New York, you may think of as a progressive place. Well, yes and no. Yes. Um, it is and it isn't. And and um, what happened there, the, the police did a number on Dinkins. What happened was that um, they went around in the middle of the night enforcing a blue law. The blue law was that you're not allowed to park a carriage on the street overnight. And they put tickets on every car that was on the street at night to embarrass Dinkins. And I'm just wondering if we've had uh, something like that that happened to Obama. But, but in any event, in both cases, there was this backlash against the black administrator. And I think we're, all, we're, we're done with it now. Yeah. And once you go black, you go black and half Indian. It's great. I love it. Let's keep going. <laughs> Larry, what do you got for us? We're at the bottom of the half hour. Yeah, we should Already. take a break now. That's way too fast. Uh, way this too is fast. the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. 103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Hello and welcome back to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. I'm Dr. Five and today is Sunday, January 10th. 2021. Uh, let's talk about the atheists and free thought groups that you can join right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. First, there's the ASK, Atheist Society of Knoxville. Mm. Founded in 2002, we're in our 18th year, 19th now, I guess, 2021. Wow. ASK has over a thousand members and we have a weekly Zoom meeting during COVID. And you can find us online at Facebook or at knoxvilleatheist.org. Uh, you can go directly to Meetup or Google and just search for Knoxville Atheist, and you'll find us. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your area. Don't find one? Start, Start one. one. Uh, right. Another large free-thinking group here in Knoxville are the Rationalists of East Tennessee, R-E-T. You can find them on Facebook or by going to rationalists.org. Uh, Earlier in the show, we said we talked about the Knoxville Atheist video show. Well, yeah, it was on TV for 10 years as the Free Thought Forum Knoxville, and you can go to YouTube and find those archives. Now it's currently broadcasting under YouTube as Free Thinkers United Coalition of Knoxville. So go to YouTube in either case and search for those words, you'll find it. Also, if you're interested in getting involved with the TV or the radio show, just come to an Ask a Meetup, virtually, of course or RET uh, website and talk to us about it. You can be our next co-host or guest. Uh, where do you want to pick up Wombat? With gaslighting, I assume? Well, I, I thought we were talking about movies and how we all wish they can come back and that a good way to recreate the movie experience. Until Are you gaslighting done. this show? No, no, no. <laughs> the way we'll create movies is by getting a bunch of popcorn. And the best thing that you have with popcorn is salt and pepper. What a fan, what a fan, what a fan, what a mighty good fan. What a mighty, what a mighty, mighty good, good fan. Guys, we had some good comments yesterday. So I want to get, I want to get feedback. We did have listener feedback, right? I do want to get right into the main topic of the show, though. So I will say one of the nicest, I'll give the nicest comment that we got on last week's video, which was, if 2021 doesn't change, I will. And this is the nicest comment. Uh, it was by Arthur Franco. He says, I love this episode. You guys have one of the best podcasts out there. I eagerly await some more SE videos from you when it is safe to do so. And I said, thank you, Arthur. I'm happy. I'm eager to get back out, too, when it's safe. And I'm looking forward to talking to people people about what they believe and how they believe it and how they came to those conclusions. We want to talk about gaslighting today. Um, we, we gave some time for ourselves to vent about the, the terrorist attack, the insurrection event that happened um, early last week. I want to talk about gaslighting, which is essentially telling a lie over and over and over again, such that people tend to believe it. It's human nature to tend to grow accustomed to things or be desensitized to even <coughs> falsehoods. And if you tell someone a lie, you want to believe it. Absolutely. And if you tell someone a lie enough times and they don't have a good basis and critical thinking, they'll tend to believe it. And I think we saw that 
um, you know, just as recently as the, early this week, Tuesday, uh, when uh, we had uh, on the 6th, the Electoral College came together and Trump's there in front of the Capitol building or just down the road saying, hey, here are all these things that I'm upset about. All these things that were not proven true in a court of law, but you know you're, they're true because I love you guys and we're going to fight and we're going to make sure those senators, you know, do what we want them to do. You got to show strength. I'll be there with you. Go there now. Go to the Capitol building. Walk down there and show them what's up. I'll, bye. <laughs> <laughs> and he did it out. That's, a bad, that's the worst Trump impression of 2021, yeah. by the way. Larry, what do you got? Sorry. Well, I was just going to say that, that one of the lies that he told during that was that uh, that he sending he's sending him down there because Ben Pence didn't do what he wanted him to do. Right. He, you know, Pence was supposed to stop the electoral process, uh, electoral college count in, by some means, right. but he did not have the the power. He did not have the constitutional authority to do so. But, but, but Trump said he what? did. But Trump yeah. said he did. But, right. That's part of the gaslighting. But also to continue the gaslighting, I, tuned, I just happened to turn over to uh, Fox News to check on what they were saying about this breach of the Capitol. Mm -hmm. And they said it was going on because Pence didn't do what Trump asked him to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, while it was going on, it was just more gaslighting from Fox News. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, uh, George, you want to weigh on this? Uh, I was just saying that uh, Trump took the great position of let's you and him fight. Let's, it's a Godzilla reference, guys. I love it. Uh, it may take a moment. No, no, no. I got you. I'm with you, George. Yeah, but anyway. He also, yeah, he also <laughs> said in his rally that he would march uh, down there with them. Fox, oh, he Fox is. He did it. And he didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the Fox is a very interesting case because um, Rupert Murdoch, the guy who owns Fox, has been known to throw his weight behind liberals from time to time. What he'll do is he'll put the force of his media empire behind the side that he thinks will do the most good for him. Right. Who makes him the most? And so money? it can shift. You notice that. Well, it's who who will give him and his media empire a position of advantage in the future. So you'll notice that when it started to look like the Democrats were going to win the presidency, he flipped to Pence. Fox stopped supporting uh, Trump at that moment. Yeah, um, I want to say this. Not completely. Boudreaux, I'd love to get your opinion on this as well. Um, there are genuinely good people who don't have access to objective information just due to the culture that they're in. Like they go to the gym, all the TVs are on Fox News. They go home, their parents control the TV. <laughs> they go to work, maybe it's their pastor and, and they're having a conversation and it's very politically motivated and leaning towards one way. The, the football team has to pray before uh, school goes mm -hmm. on the newspaper is slanted and there's no access to like, you know, like what else is outside of this particular mode of thinking. And I think like that is the kind of condition that indoctrinates someone to be more motivated to believing things that Trump might be saying, even if they're demonstrably, demonstrably not true. Um, do you think that that scenario is actual and what could someone, if, that's inside that scenario do to get out of it. Yes, I absolutely think that's, and especially Tennessee, Kentucky, I see it a lot. Yeah, yeah. it's, I've, I've actually been tempted to try to uh, figure out how to get the gym TV to, to block <laughs> from the Fox <laughs> News channel. But um, I, I, yeah, I, it's, it's uh, you know, it's a lot, it's brainwashing in a lot of ways. Uh, and brainwashing of my dad is a is a uh, documentary that came out a few years ago that's just fantastic. And it uh, for someone my age, it it tracks really well with, you know, my dad was you know driving in a car, uh, you know, listening to talk radio because he drove a lot. And yeah. people that were popular on talk radio had to have something to talk about and keep people engaged. And that you know kind of created the I forget the predecessor to Rush Limbaugh, but you know those were. Those are the ones that they came up with language to incite people and get people to keep listening. So yeah, I, it, yeah, it's it's a 
a steady inundation of of, right. of alternate facts, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Sure. George, go George. ahead. Um, I think that people have a tendency to want to be addicted to the feeling of outrage. Ooh. Yes. So this yeah. is a psychological. That's cool. This is a psychological thing, and that's what you're talking about, Boudreaux. It's, yeah. um, and it does predate Rush Limbaugh. You know, it, it, the radio people know this. The pastors know this. You know that if they if they talk about use outraging language, that people will resonate fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're more mindful of like the angry voice than the one that's happy. So it's like, for example, you know, if you are a surveyor, oh, yeah. if you're in Disneyland and you're doing all the surveys for Disneyland, someone says, hey, 10 out of 10, I had a great time. 10 out of 10, I had a great time. And it's just 10 out of 10 for like, you know, the first 30 surveys that you get. And you get one that's like a two out of 10. And it was like, April didn't say good morning to me when I stepped on the teacup ride. And I'm like, ooh, we got to focus on this two out of 10, guys. We got to make our company bigger. You. It, in proportion to everything else, the the outrage or like the angry voices or the things that go wrong stand out to us just out of the human nature more so than all the ten yeah. tenets. I think you know, coming from years ago, the, the idea was that good news does not sell newspapers. Screaming go. headlines do. Bleeds. Yeah. If it bleeds, it leads. If it bleeds, it leads. Oh, terrible, terrible, yeah. terrible things. It bleeds, like it leads. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah. Yeah. It's unfortunate, but it, yeah, that's what sticks in your memory. Um, yeah, you look at the genres of now. Now, popular, about right? our on our topic. Yeah. Yeah. On our topic of gaslighting and repetition, uh, I remember here 50 years ago, I was in radio and a time salesperson who was a friend of mine said to me that an advertisement on the on the air is not effective unless it is repeated twice. Mm -hmm. So you got to have the message out there three times yeah. in order for it to gain some traction. Mm. And no. For whatever that's worth, fifty years ago, that's no. It's a sales pitch. It's a persuasive yeah. pitch. You have yeah. to make it. You have to make someone desensitized to it through repetition, and that's how it gets through. Because we might have our guard up the first time, but the second time you hear it, the third time you hear it, and maybe from someone else, then it becomes more of like ingrained into, you know, like you're or your more sensitized to it if it's an uncommon opinion. Right, and and there's not and much where, difference. And, there's not a difference in parallels between what Trump was doing for the last four years with regard to, or the last, you know, maybe six months, four months since the election was decided to what a pastor might be doing in a church setting, you know, like you're, you're in, you're Bingo. a clergy member. And it's like, hey, Jesus walked on water. He died for your sins. You're a sinner and you need to pray and give your soul to Jesus. You need to confess. You get told that enough times, particularly when you don't have the wherewithal to parse truth from facts as a child and when your parents are telling you the same thing too and all the other administrators in your life your teachers your principals the firemen the, the police chief all saying the same things too and they're right. all wearing all the, the way same, up to the president all the way to the president's wearing the same memorabilia Ooh, there's no hope for some things like that like that yeah. is a hard hole to climb out of dread uh it sounds like you want to say something go on ahead you know i i, I just i totally agree with you um I mean, uh, I was raised Roman Catholic, and uh, you know that uh, that rhetoric is powerful. It's uh, you know when it's repeated, you know through catechism, and and every time you go to church, uh, you know the you know the mythology becomes a part of you, and uh, it's absolutely uh, one of the most difficult things to overcome yep. in a person's life. Yeah, yeah, and that's and that's one of the reasons that atheists should be have a good sense of pride about being able to recognize it for what it was and be yeah. able to, uh, to leave it behind. Or mm -hmm. in George's case, having parents that have enough integrity to not indoctrinate their child right. when, sure. when they're born. Just being uh, like, absolutely. hey, let's, let's let this kid think for themselves because I bet you once he has a ground level of critical thinking, he'll hear someone say, there's a guy that walked in water and be like, what? Forget about yeah. it. No one can walk. Yeah. What are you talking about? I uh, like a filter fish. That's the only right. thing I can't, I like. I can't open <laughs> I have to say, too, that some filter fish is not that palatable, you know. <laughs> you got to do it right. <laughs> no, I can't overstress the importance of picking the right parents. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's true. Larry. 
Um, I think this might be... My parents were horrible in other ways, but not this one. Yeah. Larry, for your case, when 9-11 happened, it was a call to action for you to be outspoken as a critical thinker and as an atheist and, and let people know like where you stood like on this religious uh -huh. question. And yeah. I wonder if the events that happened this week or last week will be a call to action for people to be like, critical thinking does matter. Facts are worth fighting for. And when I'm being told a lie, I'm not going to let that happen anymore. I'm not just going to be quiet yeah. and, and resolved. I'm going to well, set the culture where this is not acceptable. I'm sure it will, but uh, it's harder, I think, in, in that particular position or when it's political mm. because you can interpret reality in different ways. Uh, like uh, the people who broke into the Capitol thought that they were do, they were doing an act similar to Lexington and Concord. They were taking their country back. They were acting as as patriots to, to return uh, honesty to government because they've been gaslighted for so long that, uh, that the elections were fraudulent. They thought they had lost their, um, their representation in government. But that simply wasn't the case. They were outvoted. Um, but, but in the case of religion, you're looking at supernatural and, and invisible beings and miracles and things that cannot be proven at all to even exist. It, so it's much harder to question your, your interpretation uh, from a political standpoint, I think. I, can, I, I don't, think I, they, they should and could. I definitely think there are writers who had that impression, but I also feel like there are writers who are like, Trump wants me to do this, and I support Trump more than whatever America supports, because America doesn't support what they did. Trump supported what they did. <clears throat> Trump's their guy. Trump's the person on their flag. And I, when, I, when I hear, like, you know, these guys are just patriots. They're trying to take back their country or, like, try to get better representation because they feel like their country wasn't really representing them. That's what... I, and I look at their pictures, and it's they're carrying the Confederate flag through the Capitol buildings. I'm like, these guys don't really care about America. These guys care about their own intentions, their own privilege, and they don't want to lose any ounce of power that they've institutionally been given unfairly, disproportionately. And um, when I look back to the summer, and I see protests that were peaceful with regard to hey, the government's not really representing us. The government is doing things that are actually hurting us and we like to be better represented. That was a Black Lives Matter protest that were going on this summer. And the re police response to those protests, even when Trump wanted to go through Lafayette Park and take a, a right. photo op with just him holding a Bible upside down, for crying out loud, uh, these people who were protesting were, were pepper sprayed, shot with rubber bullets, arrested, um, tasered, uh, uh, Land, uh, zip wrapped, you know, behind their back, had had, had its cracks. There were people who died. Like there's people who died all across the nation for just trying to support the fact that their lives matter just as much as everyone else's. And those are people who are fighting for right. what I believe are American rights. These are people who are like America represents everybody. <laughs> This is not a good representation that we're in right now. There's a disproportionate amount of you know, policing on, on, based on color or skin. This isn't fair. This is what. This is not what we're about. What I see from the Capitol rioters, the, those terrorists, is like I don't care if the government says the other guy voted. I want my guy to be in charge, even if it means right. I have to go in here and change that. And so that true. is definitively anti-American. But, yeah, but they're still interpreting it as a, as a revolution to, to get back to that point yeah. Um, yeah. You know, of their power. Their, it's a revolution um, of, it's more of a temper tantrum. It's like, hey, that's going to give you cavities. I want it anyway. It's like, I'm having a revolution. It's like, if you're having a temper tantrum, calm down, calm down, Timmy. <laughs> Boudreaux, do you think that's fair? What uh, you're yeah. free to say, devil's advocate yeah. or whatever. No, no, I think it is fair. But the one thing that we we have to admit and, and put some light on is the fact that, <laughs> at least according to my Facebook news feed, the, there are people on the right that completely saw that differently. They thought that the Black Lives Matter protests were violent and just as, as bad as the terrorist attack. And mm -hmm. I'm like, how, why do we have two different news sources? Like, how did how did you get, you know, because I, I even talked to people in cities that it was going on. I was like, wow, it looks crazy and dangerous. Like, no, that's not actually really happening. So it's gaslighting, right? Or it's, it's fake news or whatever you want to call it. How is it that I can watch a news feed 
and get the same impression that you got, Ty. Mm. But, you know, some of my friends on the right can watch a news feed and get a totally different perspective. And it's like I almost can't even fault them. Because yeah. if that's what you think is true, yeah. then maybe you're right. But I don't <laughs> – where's the truth? Where's the truth? Where's the truth? <laughs> so like, because people disagree doesn't mean that the truth doesn't exist. It could, could mean right, that one of the two groups is wrong or they yeah. both are wrong. And it's, it's the same thing with science. Just because there's disagreement in science doesn't mean there's no such thing as science or so, no such thing as an objective truth. I do would like to say that I think context – matters just as much as facts i think it's all part of the same thing and like if i said hey you know um if you if you came into my house with an axe dragged me out unconscious and put me in the back of your truck like we would say that's a bad thing unless contextually if you're a fireman and you're trying to save me because my house is burning down right. the context of situations matter and oftentimes violence is used or not violence but like Unrest is used by the voices of people who have no voice because it's the only way, like we had said, to get attention from people mm -hmm. who would give us no attention whatsoever. And so when I look at the context of unrest that happened in like certain sects of Black, Matter, Black Lives Matter, it's like, that's unfortunate, but what's the context of the situation that's causing this? And what spurred this kind of response? And there's a lot of, there's a list of names that led to something that led to these kinds of unrest. But when I look at the unrest that happened in the Capitol, that is not so much reacting to oppression or uh, a suppression of a vote or mistreatment of based on color of skin. That's acting on orders given by a, a, a chief, <laughs> the, the leader in chief of this country. Yeah. It's no, explicitly Jeffrey. telling the them- The madman. The, this is something you need to do because this is how I feel about X, Y, Z. And you should feel right. about that. So you go over there and do this. It caused some havoc. And they were like, we like you more. Yeah. We'll do it. You're our guy. We'll do it. And and these are all the crazies from all around the, uh, the nation gathering in one place, listening to this one guy. And he had one opportunity to tell them not to, to, to behave. <laughs> decided not to. And it was gone. George, I'll go to you in just yeah. one second. I, want I, just, I just wanted to say one last thing. Um, uh, if we if we need to go long, uh, uh, I won't cut this conversation short. Uh, we can make edits in the future. I'm sure there's a lot of things that people want to say. So uh, sorry if we go a little bit long today. But George, go on ahead. I want to follow up on what Boudreau said because I think it's very very important. It, it is is maybe the crux of the whole thing hmm. that. Um, to follow up on that, what is to be done, you know, how are we going to build on the very fragile gains that we just have achieved? And they are fragile. Yep. Um, we have come very close to becoming a fascist dictatorship. Absolutely. And that fascist dictatorship still has a tremendous amount of, of power. And you know, support. They, they have achieved a Especially lot of traction in the courts. In the and, courts. Yep. Yeah. Though let's be thankful well, I'm, that I'm the thinking about justices just, that were elected had enough integrity to be like, no, we're not going to listen to this. This is nonsense. Indeed. It could have been completely different. Yeah. I mean, we we have Republican leaders who who have finally broken with their chief, and um, you know, I'm I'm very grateful for that. So I, I, I really feel that, that the psychology is a science. You know, it's a discipline. Yeah. Engineering is a discipline. Um, and I, I just use engineering as an example of, of things that we don't often think of as disciplines. But I, I, I think that... Um, there needs to be a, a retrusting of science, yeah. of scientific process, of scientific reasoning, and as as Boudreau hinted hinted at, it, people are listening. Different people are listening to their own echo chambers. Yes. What are we going to do? So, uh, Dred, do you want to? Can we reach, for instance? 
uh, let me finish this one thought. Uh, can we, for instance, enlist their pastors? Is that possible? Hmm. All right. <laughs> I, I don't know, invoking or seeking the help of one group of deluded people to uh, counter <laughs> another group of deluded people, I don't know, that seems counterproductive. Um, yeah, that's my baby thought. Steps, Tred, baby steps. <laughs> yeah, like baby right steps. now, I'm I'm in both of your camps because I don't want uh, a nation of clergymen running the government. And Boudreau, no. baby steps, it would be an improvement compared to what we got right now. So like even when it was Reverend, Reverend Warnock as the senator, I was like, yeah, but I really wish he wasn't a clergy guy. Like I even yeah. even <laughs> Killer Mike, even a lot of like really popular black artists were like, yeah, I don't feel comfortable having a clergyman be in office, but it is better than what we have now. And I think this guy has the wherewithal to say, no, I'm I'm I might have God in my mind, but I'm a servant to the people first. And I'm like, okay, okay, fine, 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 fine. But yeah, in my head, it would be nice to have a secular government, you know. Um, yeah, Dread Pirate, good point. Pedro, good point. George, good point too. Um, here's here's the last question. I, I want to I want to add to this that 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 um, I, I have met an amazing number of Catholic clergy people who have questions in their mind. Good. Maybe it's not as hopeless as we think. Maybe it's not. I think we have a lot of hope to come. Uh, this, I think yesterday, maybe even this morning, I woke up to the news that Trump was banned on Twitter. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and Permanent. permanently. Permanently. Because, you know, you you cause an armed insurrection on the Capitol and you get 12-hour ban on Twitter. It's like, come on, get out of here. What's he coming for? Let's get out of here. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so uh, uh, Twitter banned Trump uh, ex uh, permanently. And then I think what Trump did was he tried to go on an alternative account that he had for campaigning, and then that got banned. And then he was like, well, I'm still going to send out my message. So he went to the POTUS account to say the same thing, and then the POTUS was suspended. So, like, you can see where his priorities are, where, like, by Biden's like, I got to set up my cabinet. I got to figure out where COVID needs to be stopped. I got to make sure Justice Department knows what to do. And Trump's like, how do I tweet <laughs> more? Right. Well, it's so, all about him. It yeah, always has been. It always has been. What is the nature of uh, free speech? And you, Because you're going to hear this a lot. You're going to hear, oh, uh, Twitter, Google, Facebook, they're part of the communist rule. And, and the tech giants are silencing the right Ooh. free speech for people, particularly anyone that has a conservative point of view. You're going to hear that a lot. I'm already hearing it now. Like, I literally just heard that this morning, like, blurry and I looking at my phone, and I'm already braced for the onslaught of Google, Facebook, tech giant communism. Larry, I'd like to hear from you. Like, do um, you think there's validity in the argument that uh, blocking mm -hmm. Trump from Twitter is uh, uh, an assailment of his free speech? Well, no, it's it's no more uh, an assailment on his free speech than it would be a, on somebody who's yelling fire in a, in a, in a crowded theater. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you, you don't do that. We have laws against inciting a crowd, and we have laws against insurrection speech. Uh, there's, it's not exempt speech, and he, he tried to exempt himself, and it just doesn't work that way. He's not above the law as much as he might think he is. Yep. Uh, what about uh, Google and maybe some others uh, banning uh, Parler, the uh, alt-right social media? Yeah. Well, they're, they're using it stores. for organizational purposes. Yeah. You might want to explain what Parler is just to the audience real quick. Yeah. 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 I haven't. I haven't dared uh, tried <laughs> <laughs> looking at it yet. But my understanding is it's kind of an alt-right social media. You know where where they apparently where they, they don't. Yeah, they don't have any uh, bans or facts checks or anything like that. Yeah, it's um, like 4chan, but, you know, yeah. uh, for Twitter, for communication gathering. So, yeah, yeah, they took them off the stores. Uh, and I think it's responsible for them to do so. Google is like, hey, you know, if we're willing to go this far, let's make sure that we're being consistent. And I think it sends a good message that, like, if you're using any app to cause harm, particularly for the new administration that will have in place, you know, for something that affects every American citizen, you, you can make the point of we are a private company and no one is no one has a right a constitutional right to the platform like if they want to go to their balconies and scream at the top of their lungs they can do that that's their problem or they can street do that. corner yeah exactly which and there are many available and you can totally do that but you can't use <laughs> our app with our you know software our servers our hard work to promote your hate 
Yeah, well, the, uh, the problem uh, with that is that there is a, there are, like parlor that you uh, they, they set up specifically to handle right, uh, far right uh, inflammatory speech. Yeah. I mean, you can say inflammatory or not, it's not inflammatory to them. Yeah. But I mean, you have Facebook who's trying to be uh, middle of the ground, try to support uh, like good um, moral standards, I guess you could say, or societal standards. But then because of the Constitution, you can have a company who wants to set up and just flame the entire world. Who knows? Yep. But uh, that's the problem with the Constitution. But we have some laws in place about the type of speech that you're allowed to put out. Right. Thank goodness. Boudreaux? So maybe let's let's hit it close to home here. Um, this is my understanding. I've never, I've never like looked into this fully, but several years ago, I heard uh, Zuckerberg, who used to be atheist, maybe found God or did something happened where he wasn't so much. There was a point where they were banning atheist groups on Facebook. Really? Um, and this is a flimsy memory, and oh, I'm not entirely he's sure. He's gaslighting. Of, of, of all the yeah. No, no, but it's worth like okay. So yes, we should we should we should cut out these these uh, these toxic things. It's like well, what if it starts happening to our team? You know, uh, it, it's it's a slippery slope. I think when we start talking of, about uh, banning, I'm glad I'm glad they did it. Sam Harris has been has been yelling at Jack to do to do this a long time ago with Trump. Um, but uh, it, it is, it is, I think we need to proceed very carefully, um, I, I, at least my thought. So I, I would also say this. Um, I have the same impression of Facebook when they were starting to ban a bunch of um, atheist groups along with Reddit. Uh, mm. Facebook lends its banning privileges to people. And oftentimes those people, if you were to roll a dice in America, uh, will be a Christian person. Sure. And and those yeah. people with an ounce of power will use every ounce they have. And I say it's like you give someone a hammer, they think the whole world's a nail. And so even when you're on Reddit and you're it's posting a nail. A, you're you're posting in a philosophy group about like, hey, this is a critical thinking path towards walking away from like hardcore dogma, such as like these religious thinking principles and you can be like mobile minded and stuff like that. I have I've had a member of my post blocked and, and 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 taken off of even reddit and facebook and then other days if i post like at two o'clock in the morning when those christians are asleep <laughs> and the european mods are awake it goes through and i get like seven thousand yeah, likes okay. and i'm like huh isn't that a really unfortunate thing that it's always just down to a subjective nature uh larry go for it well it's just gonna say five minutes so be careful or you don't want to we got over. we have 10 minutes but yeah you're right you're right we are going to wrap up okay. uh so a long break i forgot I <laughs> go ahead george uh, yeah go ahead george yeah. um i i want to follow up on something that larry brought up a couple of minutes ago um <laughs> i can't remember what it was I'm oh no old. it's okay uh, hey what was it, larry? maybe this will maybe this will refresh oh yeah yeah, yeah you, oh, you yeah, can't yeah, you yeah. can't qu I remember you, you can't cry fire in a crowded theater. Mm. Um, you can't incite violence. I think this part is, this is the cutoff point. Yeah. And um, Zuckerberg, I believe, fell for uh, Trump's Kool-Aid. Oh, no. You know, he drank Trump's Kool-Aid. He was, he was um, enamored of something you know, he he was a little bit too reticent mm. to take any position that would oppose the the fascist dictator. There was something. There was some some honey that Trump put out that Zuckerberg fell for. I, no, it I took, think it took an event of. I think I think he falls for the same thing that everyone that doesn't speak up for like Black Lives Matter or for for anti-authoritarian rule fall into where it's if i'm quiet it will go away or if i'm complicit i'm therefore anti mm. fighting against mm. this threat and it's not so much being complicit to racism which will get rid of racism it's being anti-racist that will get rid of racism it's being anti-authoritarian anti-fascist that gets you to not have fascists rule this country and you have to be vocal and you have to set the tone if you're a politician it's your duty to make sure that the american principles of democracy stand but if you're not in politics if you're not in a political office if you're just like me like a pedestrian on the street it's your duty to set the tone 
of what's acceptable in this country and what's not acceptable in this country. And you do that through conversations, by asking people questions, by making your voice heard. And when issues stand up like this, like when, when the president literally incites violence against his own party, <laughs> against the, the, the next heads of states, four orders down, that's something that's worth talking about and, and saying, hey, this is not good. The people who represent me in political office need to make sure that they agree with me on this thing. And the ones who still support the president even after today, even after they were huddled away by Secret Service and then brought back to the, the, the joint session and still gave their, their written speech they had beforehand where they were like, and this vote was a fraud. And there's a lot of irregularities you got to look into. Those are the people you need whose names we've got to remember and make sure we never put back to the office again. And I'm hoping that they will be held accountable uh, because it's our duty to hold them accountable. Hmm. And that's, that is something that we have to do. It's not being quiet and letting it hope go away because we're all billionaires. Right. It's fighting against it. That's the way how we get rid of problems. And, and, and I, I think that we have to start changing the <clears throat> language and... and and start referring to ourselves as as, as what? what the You're patriots. Yeah, you froze. We are the patriotic people. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. The ones can you hear me back. now? Yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah, I said, I said uh, we're the patriots. Um, I want to say one last thing, last topic. Uh, free speech is not free. And it doesn't mean that you get to say whatever you want to say, however you want to say it. Um, well, have, without pushback. It doesn't mean you're going to speak without consequences, but it also right. doesn't mean you can say whatever you want, whenever you want to say it. Like we have rules in place of guidelines of like, you can't incite harm against people and you can't incite panic. So yeah, lie in court uh, or lie in court. Like we have rules, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. like free speech doesn't just mean like, Oh, I can't say something. That's a violation. It's like, mm -hmm. no, you look it up what it means. Dread pirate. What do you got to say? It's uh, like the saying, uh, the, your right to swing your fist is when it comes, uh, ends where it hits my face, right? Right. It ends where <laughs> you, your, my nose begins. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's All right. So uh, I, I really enjoy talking to you guys. Thank you for this. It's weird because of COVID. It's weird to have um, conversations with people where you can just speak freely because I'm in, I'm in Tennessee right now and, and we live in like a pressure boiler, but I feel spoiled. I, I literally said spoiled when I, when I since subscribed to Biden's presidential channel and he's going through the members of cabinet that he's bringing in and he's making it a point to say things that I've been thinking about the nature of how police interacted with the protesters, lending them in, taking selfies with them, but yet chasing black officers up the Capitol floors, uh, just one floor higher. And, and the nature of the terminology uses against them, like they're not just protesters, they're insurrectionists, they're, they're bad right. people. It's important to use those words. Absolutely. Yes. And I am so looking forward to two weeks from now, hoping everyone's good. And I also like the fact that, George, you brought this up. I think there's going to be positive consequences. I think Secret Service is going to be hyper aware of the fact that this can happen in this country. And we will not let something this embarrassing happen to us again, where you just let 100,000 people walk into the Capitol building and, and urinate on the floors and, like, steal letters. Like, we can't let that happen. We need And computers. They stole computers, too. <sighs> And I think it's also a good demonstration of the fact that there is a double standard in this country. And right. anyone who says there isn't, we can right. now have clear example that it's not the case. And that this is something that as Americans, everyone, we all need to work on together. And so um, thank you crazy people from around the country who went to show us how crazy we are because it's no longer <laughs> it, you now officially made it white people's problem too <laughs> no longer that's right <laughs> that's exactly. thank you very much for that we appreciate it we appreciate it's it it's not academic uh, anymore yeah 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 so let's hope to so. and thank you trump for making america great again we, we really appreciate that <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Boudreaux, is there anything you'd like to plug? We have your music video in, the, in this mid half of the show, by the oh, way. Oh, sweet. Yeah. yeah thank well, you I got that. an original coming soon. And how about, I, how about I tie together what you just said 
with a uh, Star Wars reference. Oh, because, go for it, uh, go for it, go for it, go for it. You know, for the, for the, in the prequels, they made a really big deal about how young Anakin Skywalker, spoiler alert, becomes Darth Vader, uh, <gasps> was going to bring balance to the Force. And everyone's mm-hmm. like, yes, this is a good thing. This is good. And it, as it turned out, it did balance the Force by wiping out a bunch of Jedi. Maybe the same thing's true with Make America Great Again. Yes, Make America, Gr- America Great Again. Everyone thinks it's a bad thing for uh, democracy and uh, all that. But maybe... Maybe you're right, Ty. Maybe it's it's we, we needed this bad to happen so that we <laughs> feel good again. So I hope go. just, and he, just to get the pendulum to swing the other way, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone yeah. so incompetent that through all of it, he just Mr. Beamed himself and made everything great. <laughs> without, with zero intention whatsoever. Uh, uh, Dread, how can we find your stuff on YouTube? Yeah, so I, I stream Sunday mornings at uh, 8 a.m. PST, the specific standard time. And my channel is Mind Pirate, M I N D P Y R A T E. Look forward to seeing you. And I'm Let's Chat. George, I know you don't have anything because if I were asking you, you'd be like, I am not. No, I do. Oh, he I does. Do. Quick, give us something real quick. I give do. us something. Yes. Okay, real quick. Um, America is great already, and the nice. greatness of America is in the diversity of our people. Absolutely. Yeah. And we have a lot to pull from here. Uh, Larry, I had a quick question. I don't know what atheism is, and I want to know what it's all about. What can I do? Well, you might. <laughs> I happen to have a book on that. It's called Atheism. What's it all about? It's available on Amazon. What's it all about? Uh, yeah. My content, my, my other content is on digitalfreethought.com. You can go there to find a blog, a radio show archives, our atheist songs, and many articles on the subject. Uh, if you're if you have any questions about the show, you can send them to ask an atheist at knoxvilleatheists.org and we'll answer them. Uh, if you have ch- that's my book, thanks, Dre. <laughs> and if you're having trouble with scrupulosity, that is leaving religious beliefs behind, <laughs> I recommend going to recoveringfromreligion.org. They'll help you any way they can. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. And this has been a Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. We're on every week uh, locally on the radio at uh, 7 o'clock p.m. on Wednesdays. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next week at 7 o'clock on Wednesdays. This is Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. See ya. Bye. Bye, everybody. And you are going to somebody else's hell. That's right. <laughs>